नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग यू आर वाचिंग राज्यसभा टेलीविजन आई एम स्मृति रस्तोगी विद न्यूज टुनाइट लेट्स बिगिन द बुलेटिन विद द टॉप हेडलाइंस सेंटर सेट्स अप एट मेंबर सर्च कमेटी ऑन लोकपाल फॉर्मर सुप्रीम कोर्ट जज जस्टिस रंजना प्रकाश देसाई टू हेड द पैनल दैट विल इंक्लूड प्रसार भारती चेयरपर्सन ए सूर्य प्रकाश एंड फॉर्मर एसबीआई चीफ अरुण धति भट्टाचार्य Election Commission writes to Cabinet Secretary and State Chief Secretaries clarifies that premature dissolution of assembly brings a model code of conduct into effect immediately letter comes in the wake of the recent dissolution of Telangana Assembly Offering namaz in mosque not integral to Islam rules Supreme Court upholds 1994 verdict in the case while declining to refer matter to the larger bench paves way for daily hearings on the appeals in Ayodhya title suit from October 29 Vice President underscores the need to promote discussion on heritage culture and history of the country In his inaugural address at the 4-day Lok Manthan program at Ranchi emphasizes debate as the only way to resolve the disputes. And champion of the earth award honors Indian tradition says Prime Minister Narendra Modi dedicates you an honor to the nation calls for global efforts to tackle climate change reiterates commitment to ensuring climate justice. The center on Thursday constituted an eight member search committee to recommend the chairperson and members of the anti-corruption ombudsman Lokpal. The committee will be headed by former Supreme Court judge Justice Ranjana Prakash Desai, former chief of the State Bank of India Arundhati Bhattacharya, Prasar Bharati chairperson A Surya Prakash and Indian Space Research Organisation head AS Kiran Kumar as the members of the search committee. Besides them Justice Sakha Ram Singh Yadav former judge of the Allahabad High Court Shabir Hussain S Khandawala from Gujarat Police Head I beg your pardon former Gujarat Police Head Lalit K Panwar retired IAS officer of Rajasthan Cadre and Ranjit Kumar are the other members of the panel The mortal code of conduct will come into force immediately in the states where legislative assemblies have been dissolved prematurely This was stated by the election commission on Thursday the panel further said that the caretaker government will also be barred from announcing new schemes in a letter to the cabinet secretary the poll panel said the model code will apply to the caretaker state government as well as the central government in matters relating to that particular state the election commission said its directions are in line with 1994 supreme court verdict that says a caretaker government should merely carry on with the day to day governance and desist from taking major policy decisions the decision assumes importance as the telangana assembly was dissolved recently before its term ended usually the model code of conduct comes into force the day election commission announces polls and is in force till the electoral process is completed On to some more developments the Supreme Court on Thursday declined to set up a larger bench for a relook of its 1994 Ayodhya verdict which held that a mosque is not an essential part of the practice of Islam the judgment paves the way for the apex court to hear the politically sensitive main Ayodhya title suit from 29th of October the Supreme Court on Thursday declined to review its own 1994 judgment that said mosques are not integral to islam it said the case which is linked to the ayodhya land dispute need not be referred to a five judge constitution bench chief justice deepak mishra and justice ashok bhushan delivered the majority judgment saying the civil suit has to be decided on the basis of evidence and the previous verdict has no relevance on it the judgment also said that the context in which the five supreme court judges delivered the 1994 judgment has to be found It said all religions and religious places need to be equally respected. 
The majority judgment also made it clear that the controversial observation in the case is not a guiding principle to decide the Ayodhya land dispute. Justice S. Abdul Nazir disagreed with the two judges, saying what constitutes the essential practice of religion needs to be considered in detail by a larger bench. For this, he referred to the recent Supreme Court order on female genital mutilation. He added that a constitution bench must decide what constitutes essential practices of a religion and thereafter Ayodhya land dispute case should be heard. The Supreme Court says that this is a purely title suit that has been decided on evidence. This is not decided on the right to practice. This is not decided on Ismail Faruqi. आज की रेट में इस्माइल फारूकी का केस स्टैंड करता है उसको सुप्रीम कोर्ट अभी रिव्यू नहीं, रिव्यू नहीं करेगा अभी केवल और केवल तीन जज इसकी सुनवाई करेंगे उनतीस अक्टूबर से शुरू होगी इसकी सुनवाई आज की रेट में इस्माइल फारूकी स्टैंड करता है जो ये कहता कहता है इस्माइल फारूकी केस पांच जजों का जो बेंच का मैटर है कि इस जो मस्जिद है वो इस्लाम का अभिन्न अंग नहीं है यानी वो जजमेंट आज भी डिजर्व कर रहा है The issue of whether a mosque is integral to Islam had cropped up when a three-judge bench headed by Chief Justice Mishra was hearing a batch of appeals filed against the Allahabad High Court's 2010 verdict which divided the disputed land in Ayodhya between the Ram Lalla, the Nirmohi Akhada and the Sunni Waqf Board. Following the fresh order, the Supreme Court has now cleared the decks for hearing in the Ayodhya title case. The civil suit on the Ayodhya land dispute would be heard by a newly constituted three-judge bench on 29th of October, as Chief Justice Deepak Mishra retires on the 2nd of October. Muslim practitioners had alleged that the 1994 verdict, which said that namaz can be offered anywhere and not just at a mosque, would unfairly influence the matter of who the disputed site in Ayodhya belongs to, thus weakening their claim. They had urged that the decades-old verdict must be reviewed before the title suit is decided. On the other hand, Hindu petitioners claimed it was an attempt to delay the hearings in the main Ayodhya case. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And the Supreme Court on Thursday ruled that adultery is no longer a crime. Overturning the 158-year-old anti-adultery law, the Apex Court called the law unconstitutional as it denied the individuality of women. In a unanimous decision, a five-judge constitution bent struck down a 158-year-old penal law to state that adultery is not a crime. Pronouncing verdict on petitions challenging the constitutional validity of the Section 497 of Indian Penal Code, the top court quashed the law, calling it archaic and violative of the rights of equality and equal opportunity to women. The Apex Court also called as unconstitutional the law that it felt denied the individuality of women and treated them as the property of husbands. The five-judge bench held that adultery could be grounds for divorce, but not a criminal offence. Done away with both these provisions, namely section 497 of the Indian Penal Code and section 1982 of the Criminal Procedure Code. Hereafter, as the impact of the judgment, nobody in the country can be prosecuted on the ground of adultery. Four sets of concurrent judgments were pronounced to declare penal provision on adultery. Activists welcomed the verdict stating that archaic law should have been dumped a long time ago to keep pace with the world. We should have gone long back in all the countries all over the world. It's gone rather only few Muslim countries have got but their laws are shariat so they are different and uh, I do welcome it. Where the, In this law the uh, the women was treated like a um, property of the husband. Welcome judgment because first of all it equalizes the status of men and women which is under the article 14 of the constitution that both gender equality is established and I think that is a very huge step forward. So I think it's a super judgment. The top court reserved its verdict on the matter in August. Previously the law provided that only a man and not a married woman can be punished for the crime of adultery. The law sees the woman only as a victim and not a better in adultery. Raveen Singh Shoran's report for Rajya Sabha TV. On to some more news, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has dedicated the United Nations highest environmental honours, the champions of the Earth Award to the country's tradition of coexisting with nature. In a video message, the Prime Minister Modi expressed delight that the world has finally started accepting the importance of protecting nature. 
He also stressed on the need for climate justice to protect nature, saying people from poor and marginalized sections are the ultimate victims of the climate injustice. मैं विश्व समुदाय का बहुत बहुत आभारी हूं कि आपने इस सम्मान के लिए मुझे पसंद किया ये सम्मान किसी व्यक्ति का नहीं है ये सम्मान भारत की महान परंपरा का है जहां सदियों से हमें प्रकृति के साथ सह जीवन के संस्कार मिले हैं और मुझे खुशी है कि आज मानव जात प्रकृति के महत्व को स्वीकारने लगी है प्रकृति के साथ संघर्ष ने मानव जात का भी विनाश किया है प्रकृति का भी विनाश किया है इस बदलते हुए माहौल में अब हम सब प्रकृति की रक्षा की ओर बल दे रहे हैं और उसमें चाहे ग्लोबल वार्मिंग जैसे शब्द हो चाहे एनवायरनमेंट जैसे सर्व शब्द हो चाहे कार्बन एमिशन जैसे शब्द हो चाहे डेवलप कंट्री या डेवलपिंग कंट्री की परिभाषा है वो भाषाएं कुछ भी हो परिभाषाएं कुछ भी हो लेकिन अल्टीमेटली हम सब ने क्लाइमेट जस्टिस की ओर ध्यान देना होगा जो आखिरी छोर का व्यक्ति है जो वंचित है जो गरीब है वो इन सारी परिस्थितियों का शिकार होता है अगर हम कल्याण के लिए सोचते हैं अब समाज जीवन के आखिरी छोर पर बैठे हुए इंसान के लिए सोचते हैं तो जैसे और चीजों पर बल देने की आवश्यकता है उतनी ही प्रकृति की रक्षा पर भी बल देने की बहुत आवश्यकता है और उस काम में भारत पूरी तरह आपके साथ है दुनिया जो चाहता है उसमें भारत कंधे से कंधा मिलाकर चलने के लिए तैयार है फिर एक बार ये सम्मान सवा करोड़ हिंदुस्तानियों का है ये सम्मान सदियों पुराने भारत की महान परंपरा का है और इसलिए मैं फिर से एक बार इस सम्मान के माध्यम से इस महान परंपरा को भी नमन करता हूं आप सबका भी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी वाज अवार्डेड विद द यूनाइटेड नेशंस हाईएस्ट एनवायरमेंटल ऑनर्स चैंपियंस ऑफ द अर्थ ऑन वेंसडे This was for his leadership of the International Solar Alliance and the pledge to eliminate single-use plastic in India by 2022. Prime Minister Modi and French President Emmanuel Macron have been jointly recognized in the policy leadership category. Six of the world's most outstanding environmental change makers have been recognized with the Champions of the Earth Award. The awards will be presented during the Champions of the Earth Gala in New York City on the sidelines of the 73rd UN General Assembly. Kerala's and Kerala's Cochin International Airport has also been honored this year with the award for entrepreneurial vision for its use of sustainable energy. And now the news from Jammu and Kashmir where three terrorists including Lashkar-e-Toiba commander Asif Malik were killed on Thursday in anti-terror operations. An army jawan belonging to 19 Rashtriya Rifles was also killed in the operations. On a tip off security forces launched a search operation in Ghazikund area of Anantnag district on Thursday morning during which a gunfight began between the security forces and terrorists in which Lashkar terrorist Asif Malik was killed. Malik was involved in several attacks on security forces including the killings of the CRPF men at Achabal this year. In another encounter at Panzan in Badgam district, security forces killed two terrorists belonging to Hijbul Mujahideen. Two civilians were also killed in separate gun battles between terrorists and the security forces. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu inaugurated the second edition of the 4-day Lok Manthan program in Ranchi today. Vice President stressed on the need to overcome the colonial mindset while underscoring the need for extensive research and study on the culture of India. This year's theme is Bharat Bodh Jan Gan Man. Earlier, Vice President also inaugurated an exhibition based on the culture and heritage of Jharkhand. Governor Draupadi Murmu, Chief Minister Raghubar Das were also present on the occasion.
वो सरकार में जो बैठे उन लोगों का काम है हमारा चरित्र हमारा इतिहास हमारा परंपरा हमारा संस्कृति को सही रूप में लोगों को सामने रखना बहुत जरूरी है ये दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण है हमारा आजादी के बाद जो हमने विद्या प्रणाली शिक्षा प्रणाली में लिया उसमें हमने भारतीयता को और भारत का प्राचीन परंपराओं के बारे में जितना महत्व देना था उतना महत्व नहीं दे पाया कारण जो भी हो उसी कारण से स्थिति है दैट्स वाई आई फील द टाइम एज कम अगेन वी हैव टू कम आउट ऑफ द कलोनियल माइंड सेट कम आउट ऑफ द कलोनियल माइंड सेट A prize distribution ceremony was organized by the Rajya Sabha Secretariat as the Hindi Pakhwara ended on Thursday. Rajya Sabha Secretary General Desh Deepak Verma encouraged all the participants. He said that Hindi as a language is essential for developing one's personality. He also emphasized on the need to connect Hindi language with nationalism. During the event he also launched an annual journal. It's the in-house magazine of Rajya Sabha Secretariat which has been published for past 13 years. to promote the use of hindi rajya sabha secretariat had organized several mini competitions during hindi pakhwada main ummeed karta hu ki aap sab ne jo ye hindi saptah ka aayojan kiya hai usko keval hindi ke prachar prasar ke sath hi apni rashtriyata se jodne ka apne vyaktitva se jodne ka apni pehchan banane ke se jodte hue uska vikas karenge aur apna vikas karenge and congress president rahul gandhi started a two day visit to the poll bound madhya pradesh congress president said that changes will be made to the goods and services tax to reduce rates on the items if his party comes to power addressing the sankalp rally in satna rahul gandhi targeted prime minister narendra modi on the rafale fighter deal after his road show in bhopal this is the second sankalp election meeting and the road show in the state the congress has been out of power in madhya pradesh since 2003 और मैं आपको स्टेज से कह देता हूं जैसे ही हमारी सरकार आएगी किसानों का हम कर्जा माफ करके आपको दिखा देंगे जैसे जैसे ही हमारी सरकार आएगी हम पूरा का पूरा दम आपको रोजगार देने में लगा देंगे एंड विद दैट वील हेड इन टू अ वेरी शॉर्ट ब्रेक मोर न्यूज एंड अपडेट्स ऑन दर साइड स्टे विद Hello and welcome to Security Scan. I am Vishal Dahia, and this week we will take a look at the new artillery guns for the Indian Army M777 ultralight howitzers. The Japanese Shin Maiwa US-2 does not only meet the requirements; it's a game changer for Indian industry. There's a unique feature in US-2, which is called a boundary layer control system, allows it to drop the speed to very low, which allows it to land at a uh, high sea speed. Lift at least six. in flying condition for the indian navy and then go in for a manufacture here welcome back the reserve bank of india has eased mandatory cash requirement rules for the banks in a bid to provide durable liquidity to the economy in a statement rbi said banks could carve out up to 15% of holdings under the statutory liquidity reserves this will enable them to meet their liquidity coverage ratio requirements as compared to 13% now this will come into effect from 1st of october it will also help banks to overcome any possible liquidity constraints bank statutory liquidity ratio is currently at 19.5% RBI also stands ready to meet the durable liquidity requirements of the system through various available instruments citing proactive steps taken in the last few days RBI said it conducted open market operations or OMO on September 19th it further said that another OMO will be conducted to ensure adequate liquidity in the system External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj will participate in the meeting of SARC foreign ministers in New York on Thursday. Pakistan Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi will also participate in the meeting. Earlier Swaraj held talks with her Iranian counterpart Javad Zarif and discussed bilateral issues including the US sanctions against the major crude exporter 
which are said to be implemented in November. Apart from India and Pakistan, SAR comprises Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Afghanistan and Maltese. And for more on this, we'll go across to Mr. Pramit Pal Chaudhary, Foreign Affairs Editor with Hindustan Times. Mr. Chaudhary, thank you so much for speaking to Rajya Sabha Television. Given that Pakistan is aggressively, aggressively trying to garner support to be the host of the SARC summit, how do you think India can articulate its position on issue with the member nations? Well, I will expect uh, Sushma Saraj to say that while India fully supports SARC and what it stands for, uh, it does not believe right now that this is the opportune moment uh, for the SARC summit to be held, uh, and it will cite the issue of terrorism um, and the need for Pakistan, or may not cite Pakistan by name, but by implicitly state that certain countries have not done enough to stop terrorist attacks uh, from their territory. Uh, we will probably be able to get at least Bangladesh, uh, possibly the, um, um, Afghanistan, to support us on this position. Um, and I think uh, that we will stay that without, with, with a fair amount of conviction, and we can count on at least uh, the bulk of the SARC members uh, agreeing with us on that point. Will Maldives' situation figure in Sushma Swaraj's talks with the SARC leaders, given the fact that Pakistan has always been supportive of the previous regime? Oh, uh, sorry? Could you repeat that? Yeah. Will the Maldives situation also figure in the talks which Sushma Swaraj will be holding with the SARC leaders, given the fact that Pakistan has always been supportive of the previous regime? Yeah. Well, the pre as you know, the, the new regime, while it's been elected, has not, will not officially take power until November. So the Yamin regime will theoretically still be representing the Maldives. But I think what India will stress is that, the, that Yamin's government should um, respect the electoral results that have come. Uh, because there is evidence that his, he is still trying to see if he can get the vote annulled. Mm. Uh, and I think we will try to rally uh, as many SARC members as possible uh, to support uh, our position on that, that Yamin should accept the results mm. and step down peacefully. How will India approach the BRICS nation meet? I'm sorry, again, your voice uh, got broken again. I'll repeat my question, Mr. Chaudhary. How will India approach the BRICS nation meet? The, sorry, which... <laughs> sorry, again, can you repeat that? I'll India repeat my question, Mr. Chaudhary. How will India approach the BRICS nations meet? Oh... Well, as you know, the BRICS, uh, we have uh, neither Russia or China represented at the highest level uh, this time. So it'll be a relatively weak BRICS summit, and mm. Mr. Modi is not there. Putin, uh, Xi Jinping will not be there. Mm. Uh, the BRICS will focus, I suspect, on calling for an international trading system uh, to be respected, uh, the multilateral trade system, particularly because of the unilateral actions that the United States has been taking. Uh, none of these countries uh, are support the sanctions against Iran mm. and will probably urge that the disruption in the oil market uh, be minimized um, and urge that uh, such sanctions, uh, if possible, be avoided. Um, and they may talk among themselves, at least Russia, China and India, uh, about what can be done to overcome the sanctions. Uh, something that they've already been talking with the European Union with uh, about how to get around uh, the American sanctions so that Iranian oil will, will continue. I suspect that there'll be a few other issues, but mm. I suspect that will be the primary concerns of the BRICS summit. Mm. What is the possibility of BRICS nations uh, converging on the issues like monetary policies? No, 
Not really. The mm. the BRICS economies are not very united. Mm. They're very disparate in their way. The mm. Brazilian economy is in a bit of a crisis. So is South Africa. They've just come out of major economic and political problems. So they'll be looking for stability. Russia is basically uh, an oil and gas exporter. So for them, for example, the present jump in oil prices is a good thing. China and India are probably closer together in many ways, uh, but uh, there's not too much that can be done uh, to coordinate those policies. Uh, India is raising interest rates, for example, because of inflationary concerns. China, on the other hand, is lowering interest rates because of deleveraging issues at home. Uh, Brazil and South Africa need growth, so they're, they're also going in, in a negative direction. We're still very far away from any real monetary or financial coordination uh, within the BRICS. The economies are simply too disparate, and they're simply they're too far away. There's really little trade, for example, between the BRICS nations other than with China. We don't trade with Brazil. Brazil doesn't trade with Russia. Uh, but all of us trade with China. So the, the, the lack of a block sentiment in the economic side continues to be an issue there. Thank you so much, Mr. Chaudhary, for joining us and helping us uh, this uh, very important topic in detail. Moving on to some other developments, India has raised objections over Pakistan raising the Kashmir issue at the Organization of Islamic Cooperation meeting. MEA spokesperson Ravish Kumar told media persons on Thursday that it was completely unwarranted for OIC member countries to discuss matters related to India's internal affairs in any multilateral setup. Pakistan rigged up the Kashmir issue at the OIC contact group meeting on Wednesday on the sidelines of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly. And now the sports news. Saina Nehwal continued her impressive run to enter the quarterfinals of the Korea Open 2018 quarterfinals on Thursday. Fifth seeded Saina Nehwal defeated her South Korean rival 21-18-21-18 in a match that lasted for 37 minutes. This is the first time the two shuttlers are competing against each other. Fifth seed Saina will fight against 2017 world champion and third seed Japanese Nozomi Okuhara. And that's all we have for you in this edition of News Tonight. For more news and updates, keep watching Radhya Sabha Television. Namaskar.